Welcome everyone. Today we are going to take a deep dive into Lama 3. Its architecture, training, performance benchmarks, features, Meta's latest most powerful open source language model so far. This is an exciting release that's set to redefine the landscape of large language models and I'm thrilled to share all the details with you. I promise you once you have watched the video you don't need to go to any other web links, any other sources or videos. It is all encompassed. So you will get all the links as well as all the description you need to know about Lama 3. This is the second chapter in my popular LLM series. Subscribe to my channel if you want to know more about other LLMs or generative AI. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Today we are going to learn the following. What is Lama 3? Why should I learn about Lama 3? Why is it important? How is it different from Lama 2 and other LLMs available in the market whether they are open source or whether they are closed? training process and architecture adopted for lama 3 how is it different from the training process for lama 2 build and deploy lama 3 at scale like if you want to deploy it what all things you need to take care of and what are the performance benchmarks for lama 3 like how has it performed when compared to other llms and what next so i will be digging into each of these so now what is lama 3 lama 3 is the latest iteration of meta's large language model that is building upon the success of its predecessor lama 2 two versions have been released so far which are 8 billion and 70 billion parameters which can support a broad range of use cases there will be more refined versions which will have new capabilities longer context windows additional model sizes and enhanced performance higher number of parameters that will be soon released along with the lama 3 as a research paper as announced by meta Now you must be wondering why do I need to learn about Lama 3 what is so unique about it so the first reason is that it is a state of art open source model since it is open source and it is available in a large number of platforms thus it is paving way to accessible ai hence anyone venturing newly into the field of generative ai or large language models should know about it Another reason is that it is integrated with Meta AI available on web, Instagram, Facebook and WhatsApp. Lama 3 is available on uh, you might a plethora of platforms such as AWS, DataBricks, Google Cloud, Hugging Face, Kaggle, IBM Watson X, Microsoft Azure, Nvidia Nim and Snowflake. And with support from hardware platforms offered by AMD, AWS, Dell, Intel, Nvidia and Qualcomm. So since it has availability on so many platforms and it is also open source it emphasizes the fact that you should know more about it before even using it lama 3 has set a path forward to responsible ai meta has included introducing new trust and safety tools with lama guard 2 code shield and cybersec eval 2 That is another reason you should delve deeper. So now that we have established why learning Lama 3 is important, you must be wondering how is Lama 3 different from Lama 2. So now we'll dig deeper into this. In terms of scalability and performance, Lama 3 is trained on Meta's custom-built 24K GPU clusters. It that allows them to scale to new heights in terms of data and computational power. This further translates to enhanced performance, lower false refusal rates, and improved response alignment and diversity when compared to Lama 2. Now when we talk about Lama 3's architecture, Lama 3 uses a new architecture called Lama version 3, which includes improvements such as a new feed forward neural network design, improved tokenization and encoding, enhanced positional encoding. This sets it apart from Lama 2's architecture. Now when we talk about training data Lama 3 has expanded training data Lama 3 was trained on a significantly larger data set of over 15 trillion tokens which is estimated to be around 7 times larger than the data set for Lama 2 and it includes 4 times more code This allows Lama 3 to respond to a wide variety of queries and user prompts Lama 3 has improved inferential capabilities that allows it to generate text more efficiently with lower latency rate Lama 3 has been fine tuned on a wide range of task data sets making it more versatile and adaptable to specific tasks as compared to Lama 2. Lama 3 was trained using a more robust collection of non-English data covering over 30 languages making it much more equipped for use by non-English speakers compared to Lama 2. Lama 2 had the drawback that 95% of its training data was English. Lama 3 has been designed to work with multimodal inputs such as text, 
images, videos, and can generate multi-model output such as images and videos. So Llama 3 has enhanced task capabilities. It drastically elevates its capabilities compared to Llama 2, particularly in areas like reasoning, code generation, and instruction following. Llama 3 has improved contextual understanding and can handle more complex multi-step tasks more efficiently. With the release of Llama 3, Meta has updated the Responsible User Guide. I will be attaching its link in the video which is used to provide more comprehensive information on responsible development with large language models. This includes updates to their trust and safety rules, such as Llama Guard 2 and the expanded taxonomy published by ML Commons. One of the most exciting and differentiating capabilities this time is the integration with Meta AI. Llama 3 has been seamlessly integrated into Meta's intelligent assistant Meta AI, allowing users to experience the model's capabilities firsthand in areas like coding, tasks, problem solving. Llama 2 was not available for such integration. Now we have seen how Llama 3 is different from Llama 2. How is it better? But you want to know how Llama 3 is compared to oh, ChatGPT or IBM Watson and Microsoft Azure models available in the market. So for that, Llama 3 has released certain performance benchmarks. I'll share this GitHub link with you. But the, you need to be mindful that they have compared everything on macro levels, macro averages, not micro averages. And these are the common evaluation notes. Then for GPQA, they have used zero shot exact match scores. For GM, GSM 8K, they have used the same eight shot chain of thought. They have mentioned the link for the paper here. For math, they have used the four shot problem available here. And for human evaluation, they have given 1800 prompts in 12 wide use cases, 12 categories, which span from advice, brainstorming, classification, closed question answering, coding, creative writing, and so on. And there are 150 questions from each category. So if you want to replicate the results, you need to go through what are the details they have used first here. Then you need to set up the environment and use the model card as well, and then test the model along with other comparative models to get the same result. Now let us look at some of the performance benchmarks shared by Meta for Llama 3. So Meta's Llama 3 instruct model has been compared to Gamma 7 billion parameters, Minstrel 7 billion instruct, Gemini Pro 1.5 and Claude 3 Sonnet. So you can see here the performance on various parameters like for MMLU, uh, Llama 3 has 68.4, the 8 billion one, and 70 billion has 82 as the value. It's a five shot testing which has been done. Whereas Minstrel on the same parameters, Minstrel has 58.4 for 7 billion, and Claude 3 shows 79. Gemini Pro shows 81.9. So here we can see Gemini Pro 1.5 is almost similar or equivalent to Meta Llama 3, 70 billion in terms of MMLU. Now for GPQA zero shot, you can see that Meta Llama 3 70 billion is 39.5, whereas Gemini Pro outperforms it, its scoring is 41.5. And Claude 3 performs equivalent, which is 38.5. Now for human eval zero shot prompting, you can see Llama 3 70 billion score is 81.7 which is equivalent or more when you see Gemini score is 71.9 and Claude 3 73. So you will see a difference of over 10 points. For GSM 8K, the 8 short prompt, Meta Llama 3 70 billion performs and it has 93, whereas Claude 3 has 92.3. So almost equivalent. Gemini is also not lagging that far. But if you see the performance on 8 billion side, then Meta Llama 3 has 79.6 as the score, whereas Minstrel has 39.9. So there is a wide gap in performance there. Now, when we say for math, four short prompting, then Llama 3 has score 50.4 for 70 billion one, whereas Gemini Pro has the score of 58.5 and Claude has 40. So you can see that it outperforms Claude 3, but it is lagging behind Gemini Pro for math. So this is the snapshot for uh, Meta Llama 3 Instruct model's performance. Now here is a snapshot of Meta Llama 3 Instruct human evaluation performance. So you can see that with respect to Claude Sonnet, 3 has 52.9% win rate. 
With respect to menstrual, it has 59.3% win rate. With respect to GPT 3.5, it has uh, 63.2% win rate. On similar lines, Meta Llama 3's pre-trained model's performance has been shared here in this snapshot. So on the same parameters, if you see the MMLU F5 shot testing on it, the Meta Llama 3 70 billion one scores 79.5. Whereas the Mixtral model scores 77.8. So they are quite close. For the other score like AGI Eval English, you can see that Meta Llama 370 billion exceeds. It has 63 score there when compared to any other models. For Big Bench Hard, uh, three shot prompt, Llama 370 billion score is 81.3, which is way more than compared to Gemini Pro and Mixtral 8 2022 billion. Now for ARC Challenge 25 shot, you can see again the score is 93, which is more than what Mixtral has. And for drop 3 shot prompt, the score is 79.7, which is almost 5 more than Gemini Pro and 2 more than a Mixtral model. So it compares and fares really well when, when you compare the performance of pre-trained model. We have explored the performance benchmarks of Llama 3 when compared to Llama 2 and other LLMs available in the market. But now let us delve deeper into the architecture and training data, training concepts for Llama 3 to know how it performs better. Salient features of its architecture are, it's a decoder-only transformer architecture built on Llama 2. It, it has improved tokenizer with 128k vocabulary for more efficient language encoding. It adopted grouped query attention GQA to enhance inference efficiency. It is trained on sequences of 8192 tokens with self-attention constraint within document boundaries. Now, what are the distinguishing features of the training data used for Llama 3? It was pre-trained on over 15 trillion tokens, seven times larger than Llama 2 dataset. It included four times more code data compared to Llama 2. Over 5% of the dataset is high quality non-English data covering 30 plus languages. It went through extensive data filtering pipelines used to ensure high quality training data. There was a careful data mixing experimentation done to optimize performance across diverse use cases. Now let us look at scaling up laws used for Llama 3. Detailed scaling laws to guide model and data scaling decisions were built on. There was an observed continued performance improvement even after training on 15 trillion tokens. They leveraged data, model, and pipeline parallelization. So three kind of parallelization, data parallelization, model parallelization, and pipeline parallelization to achieve over 400 TFL OPS per GPU. It improved training efficiency by three times compared to Llama 2 through hardware reliability and storage optimizations. Now let us look at some of the salient features for Llama 3 instruction fine-tuning. A combination of supervised fine-tuning, rejection sampling, proximal policy optimization, and direct policy optimization was used. Careful curation of prompts and preference rankings to improve the performance on reasoning and coding tasks was done. Leveraging preference rankings enables the model to learn how to select the right answers. Now let us look at how to build and deploy Llama 3 at scale. The vision for, from Meta side was to enable the developers to customize Llama 3 to support relevant use cases. They wanted to make it easier to adopt best practices and improve the open ecosystem. For building trust, they updated components with Llama Guard 2 and CyberSec Eval 2. There was also an introduction of code shield and inference time guardrail for filtering insecure code. Meta has also partnered with PyTorch and co-developed TorchTune, the new PyTorch native library. It enables easy authoring, fine-tuning and experimentation with LLMs. It is also integrated with popular platforms to forge a path towards responsible development and deployment. Meta has taken a system level approach as shown here. They've also released a document for it. They basically are trying to be responsible about development and deployment of Llama 3 on any of the applications. It, instruction, fine-tuning, and red teaming is used to ensure safety. Llama guard models as a foundation for prompt and response safety. CyberSec eval to and code shield for mitigation risks. In terms of ecosystem collaboration, Meta has taken an open approach to bring the ecosystem together and mitigate potential harms. They have updated the responsible use guide 
so we are very close to the very end so what's next llama 3 will soon be available on all major platforms including cloud providers model api providers and more llama 3 8 billion and 70 billion models are just the beginning the upcoming models they are training which is up to 400 billion parameters is in development a detailed research paper on it will be released soon by meta once the training is completed so here's a sneak peek of meta llama 3 400 billion plus which is still under training as per the checkpoint of april 15th released by meta you can see on the similar parameters how it performs what are the performance metrics like mmlu score when compared to its current score on 70 billion parameters how is its performance on drop score what is its performance on math score so look in the video again and comment which parameters do you think it will perform better which parameters do you think it will perform worse what are your expectations from 400 billion parameter model so friends if you like this content and you feel that it was a value addition to your knowledge subscribe to my channel for similar videos on popular llms and generative ai hit the bell icon to get the latest notifications of my videos released subscribe to my newsletter on linkedin as well follow me on linkedin for latest posts and updates thank you